Hi everyone, this is me again, Millennium. Today we are going to create a DVD menu just by using presets and templates that come with After Effects 7. When we will be finished, it is going to look like what you already see on the screen. In addition to using presets, we are going to prepare our menu in such a fashion that we could use it in Encore. Let's get started by creating a new empty composition. To keep things simple, we will be using a standard DV ratio 720 by 576 composition. Name it properly and then we are set to go. The first thing we need is some simple background. For this we are going to create a solid that matches the size of the composition. Name it accordingly. With the solid in place, switch over to the Effects and Presets palette. Click on the arrow in the top right corner and choose Browse Presets. This will bring up Adobe Bridge, which is now also included with the video tools. Some of you may already know it from programs such as Photoshop or Illustrator. Bridge is your central vault for managing your media. You can browse your assets by navigating the directories or checking online for content. Let's go to the synthetics category and check if we can find something usable. This Globus Ray preset would fit our project very nicely. We are going to use it. When I select a preset, I will get an animated mini preview of my preset. However, this only works with the content provided with After Effects. Unfortunately, your own presets won't have any previews attached to them. When you double click on a preset, it will be applied to the layer that was active in After Effects. The great advantage of using presets is that unlike stock footage, they can be fully edited and adjusted to your needs. We are going to do just that. Some of the effects used in this preset have animated parameters and the first thing to do is get rid of those. The only animation we want to maintain is the rotation of the globe. As you can see the preset uses a blue color. We are going to change that to yellow so it looks more aggressive and off-worldish. With that we already have finished our background. Now let's create some buttons for our DVD menu. Again we will do this by using some presets. The first thing to do is to add yet another solid. This can be any color but we are using black again. Name it button A. Now let's find us some nice shape from the presets library. Go to the effects and presets window and choose browse presets again. This time we are going to the shape category. Pick the hexagon and double click it. It will be added as a mask to our layer. Select the newly created mask and resize it to your liking. It should be large enough to contain a video preview but also not too big. Once that's done, select the entire layer and choose Layer, Adobe Encore DVD, Create Button. Give it a name. At this point we are not caring for sub-pictures and other options provided in this panel. This function is also already available in After Effects 6.5, in case you didn't know that. We now have a new sub-composition that contains all elements of the button. When switching over to the new composition, at first sight we are not seeing much, because our background is black. Let's select the layer and we will get access to the mask shape. Let's place it more in the middle of the composition. This layer is going to be the outline for our button. Therefore we are applying the stroke effect to it. In After Effects 7 this has been moved from the render category to the generate category. Give it a black color and some extra thickness. Now finally we also have enabled transparency preview. Switch the effect to render on a transparent image and we are basically done. A frame is nothing without a picture, so let's add some footage. Duplicate the layer and delete the stroke effect. It will turn into a solid hexagonal shape. Go to the project window 
and find some footage that you can track into the composition. Rearrange the layers so the footage is under the duplicate of the button. Activate the blend mode column and set the footage to alpha mat. Slip it in the timeline and find some nice picture. To match our button to the background we are using a preset again. The one we are going to use is called night vision and can be found under image special. As the name implies it is meant to mimic a night vision camera. However, for our purposes the color is not right. Let's change it to yellow again. Our standard yellow looks too bright, therefore we use a darker tone. We are also removing the minimax effect, because we want our footage to stay a bit cleaner than intended in this effect preset. Since we are never going to touch our effects again, let's twirl them up. We can now switch back to our main composition and check if our button looks ok. We can move it around and start to arrange it. The menu is already beginning to take shape, but of course we need some more buttons. So go ahead, select the composition in the project window and simply duplicate it. Give the duplicate a unique name to avoid confusion. After that, open up the composition. Now it's time to replace the footage. Select the layer in the timeline and while holding the ALT key drag another clip onto it. This will effectively replace it. Now arrange the layer so it is contained within the button area. I have already completed all buttons and now we are going to add some text. This is completely fictitious and in keeping with our space theme I've decided to call it far out pictures. The typeface that is currently selected is not very impressive for a headline. So we are going to change it to something more exciting. Go to the character palette and choose another font. I chose this particular type because it looks very technical. After you have input your text, move it into a position where you think it could look good. The headline looks a bit dull and it also looks like it's just sitting there doing nothing. We need to add some elements to bring it together with the background. Therefore I created a thin solid that acts as a line separator between the two headline parts. The text also looks very clean. This can be easily changed by applying the roughen edges effect to it. With the default settings it will destroy our text a bit too much so we need to tweak them. I imagine our headline being some stenciling on a spaceship for instance and therefore I just want to add some gentle dents and bumps. This could happen if you fly through a meteorite shower. Also if our spaceship has been out there for very long the paint will chip and age and expose the underlying surface. To make the headline even more impressive, I'm going to change the size of the types in the first line. It's now 30 pixels and I'm bringing it up to 48 pixels. One thing that we have completely forgotten until this point is to check if our headline is within the safe area so it can be completely displayed on a television screen. We are checking this now and moving it to the outmost edge of the title safe area. This will make sure we can use the maximum screen space but still read everything. As a finishing touch we are going to use yet another preset. We want to create a somewhat nervous feeling and induce some fear. Therefore we need some twitchy preset. One such preset is Warp 9.8. For all the fans out there you certainly know where this is coming from. For those who don't know it's from Star Trek. Adjust the parameters and then do a short RAM preview. As you can see every now and then our type will jump out at us which should be way enough to attract some attention and cause some fear. 
In the last step, we need to add some labeling to our buttons. We are going to use a simple monospace type that looks also very technical. And as you will see, we are using a preset again, so it looks like it's written with a computer. With all the basic labeling laid out beautifully, it's one last time to switch over to Bridge and select the preset. This comes again from the mechanical category and is a simple underscore type in effect. You need to do this four times, of course. And when you are finished and do a RAM preview again, it should look something like that. This could, for instance, be the start of the menu. And when the type is complete, it turns into an infinite loop. So you can select the clip you want to play. I hope you enjoyed this short demonstration and can now understand the power behind the presets in After Effects. With a little time, patience and creativity, you can come up with even more beautiful stuff than what I did today. Of that I'm sure.